She was still hyped up. What else is in that cup, though, that you haven't um, mentioned? What should be there? Come on, have a look at this one here. Anger. Anger. Do you think that just because you come back, that button's going to go? Okay, so that anger button still stays there. So here we are, we're back. Now this here, this internal tension when you went to war, this hypervigilance, this exaggerated startle response, this ability to fire up and explode when it was really necessary was considered to be what? Switched on, good soldiering. You've come back, you still have some of that inner tension reinforced by Vietnam. But what's the difference now with this inner tension? It's a bad one. You could call this good stress or alertness or whatever. What do you think we could almost translate this into? It's a bad stress. Why don't we call it PTSD, which is a form of anxiety and stress. So what, what's happened is that we've, in effect, we've been trained into it. It's been reinforced by this. It sits in there. It's now a bad stress, but it sits inside you. But the world out there, you get on with your life, do you not? You've got to get on with it. So here we are, we're back in our normal environment. Money, family, work. What's our capacity to deal with those things now? Okay, so we have a lot less of an area to deal with it. And not only that, when the pressure builds up too much, what happens now? Okay. So, ladies, if you ever wondered why that toothpaste ring on the vanity bar, the coffee ring on the table, the toilet roll around the wrong way, suddenly sent your husband into an explosive outburst, and you sit and you think to yourself, what have I done? I'm suggesting that maybe you have done absolutely nothing. But what's happened is that there has been stresses build up and that toothpaste stain or the coffee cup stain or the little thing is simply the final stressor that triggered the anger button and because the veteran has been trained into when I reach this certain level of stress I know what to do when my tension and that builds up to this level I have been taught that this is what you do explode and not only have I been taught that what you do is explode I've actually been rewarded for doing it well. Therefore, the brain doesn't make a distinction between Australia or Vietnam. It simply says, I am under the same pressure. I know what to do. And so that insignificant little thing that suddenly creates that over-the-top reaction is quite often nothing whatsoever to do with you at that time. It is just that that button has been hit and you go into that sort of rage, which was totally out of proportion to the event that triggered it. And I can see by the look in your faces, they're nodding, you've, you've all been there. And so what do you start to do? You tiptoe around, don't you? On those eggshells, trying to miss them. Because if he goes off his face at that sort of thing, what's he going to do with something worse? Well, the worst things have already been in there. That little thing has just been the flashpoint. Now, the military is pretty smart because the military says, if I'm going to train you to behave this way and you come back to Australia, I actually can't have you exploding back at the depot or back at the base or whatever willy-nilly at any, any instance. So I'm going to teach you to do something. I'm going to teach you how to deal with it. What do I do? What do I give you to teach you how to hold this back a bit? There's two things, and you get them very cheaply. And when you're in war, you get them almost free. Alcohol and nicotine. Now, the interesting thing about alcohol and nicotine is alcohol is a depressant, and nicotine is a 
stimulant. Okay, so what I do is that while I'm training you in this system here, at the end of a busy day, at the end of an exercise, or at the end of what, or even the operation, what did you do? Came to the boozer. You went straight to the boozer. It was duty-free in effect. And even if you were underage, as we were in those days, the drinking age of 21, many of us 19, 20, 18, we could drink. So you'd have the alcohol and the nicotine. And in a way, you would have a form of debriefing using alcohol and nicotine. So again, what were you actually starting to do? Self-medicate. What you were starting to do was to say, OK, in order to control this tension and this inner stress, the answer's simple. If I keep on the alcohol, then I'll keep the memory down. If you don't use alcohol and nicotine, guess what the other veteran's preferred way of dealing with this sort of stuff? Workaholic. Become a workaholic. Any sort of system like that that will put a cap on it. The idea being is that those sorts of things cap off that. Because what you believe is if you do these things, you will stop this from breaking through. You follow? As a form of protection for yourself, if I do something like that, what I'm doing is I'm putting a cap on it. All right? Now, those of us that have been there will tell you that ultimately what happens with the cap. If the cap doesn't destroy you and you become a full-on alcoholic or whatever, what actually happens over time? It catches up with you. Because just the process of getting older changes it. War is fought by whom? Young men, full of adrenaline, full of testosterone. As you age, your capacity to handle that sort of pressure decreases. And so what happens is the tensions and stresses are still here, but the body isn't 20. It's no longer 30. It's no longer 40. So somewhere after this event, you're going to reach that point where the pressure and your age meet and you break through. So you ask the question, why now? Why 30 years later? All right, for you, if you're breaking now, why 30 years later? That simply means that you have reached the point where your body and the pressure is no longer able to hold it under and it's starting to break through. For others, some it's been 20s. For some it's been 30s. For some it's been the 40s. And for many in World War II, and a lot of World War II guys we see now, it's in the 80s. But it still happens. It is just that you will reach your time sometime. There is no rule that says just because you're back, it should not go away because it's trained into you. So how do we deal with this stuff? Okay. So this, so we use drug therapy. And John would have talked to you about drug therapy, using antidepressant medication. Okay. The purpose of antidepressant type medication, again, is simply to do what? Exactly. Cap it. If you think that taking the medication will fix the problem, you are wrong. Taking the medication will simply form a crust on top of this to make it harder for the tension underneath to break through. So what you've got to be clear about, though, with the drug therapy is that it is still only a replacement for the cap. It is not a cure. You've got to add something to it. And you can leave it as talk therapy. Now, what would talk therapy cover? Think about this week. What are some of the things that you do? All right. What's the most, in what was the very first, one of the very first session you did? Before that, the first one. Okay. And this is the most crucial of the lot. Learn the breathing. Learn any sort of relaxation skill. Why? That, if you can put the relaxation skill in when you feel you're getting near that button, 
and you can put in a relaxation school, a very brief one, what are you actually doing? Exactly, you're releasing the pressure and you're bringing yourself below that button. So relaxation is crucial. And then you have to start doing what? If this stuff caps it, what's the idea of the talk therapy? Okay, do you believe that you will get it out of your system totally? No. How can you say that going into a war can be totally eradicated from your system? The only way you're going to do that is if you get something like dementia or Alzheimer's disease, or there is one other way, and we'll talk about that shortly. The idea of these skills is that if the drug therapy works on there, then these skills are designed to start to break this into fragments, to break it down. The reason being is that what you're trying to do with the talk therapy is to lower that, to lessen it, to whichever level you are comfortable with. So you need relaxation. You need calm skills. How to resolve conflicts. How to go about it the correct way. How to set goals. How to motivate yourself. Your self-image. Your self-talk. Time management. And you could say, etc. Any sort of learning skill that you can use to break this down. Now, these are all skills. What have you got to do with them? Before that, though, you've got to what with them? You've got to learn them. If you learn to do them well, what are you starting to replace? Yes, you start to get the picture that where this stuff that you're doing fits in is that what, you're tr what you should be trying to do is that if you're going to use the medication, you use it as a cap. Bang. You then work on the underlying post-traumatic stress with these sorts of skills, purpose being to start to weaken these instinctive behaviours which are aggressive behaviours for war. They are not the behaviours for the world that you inhabit now. What you should be looking at these about is replacing the aggressive skills that were so important here with these skills which are so important here. The idea being is if you have medication at this level, the cap it, and you've done no talk therapy and you are still down, low self-esteem, low view of yourself, and angry and all that sort of stuff, if you've got that, the idea is that as you build this up, you lower this down until somewhere you come to a balance in your life, until you feel that you've got a balance. Now, what will happen is that you can keep working on this side. You may find that you can never get rid of the medication. And you need to be clear that for some of us, medication in a mild form may be necessary, you will eventually achieve a balance. Yeah? You're going to have days when you will feel stressed and days when you feel totally relaxed. But it's the rhythm, this sort of thing you want. Not this, right? It's this sort of pattern. So the idea is to remember that drug therapy caps it, self-talks, talk therapy builds on the good stressors, breaks down, the bad stress until you achieve the balance. Well, I'm just going to talk to you about your life. And I'm going to talk to you about Now, the reason I put 56 there is that is this year is the average age of the Vietnam veteran. What age do you go into the military on average? 19 what was national service age? 20. And you've got apprentices and you've got boy sailors and all that sort of stuff. Let's take it at roughly about 19, 20. Up until that stage of your life, what are you being subjected to? You are still a what? Civilian. Civilian. Okay, so let's have a 